Hello YouTube, Reddit Math here, and welcome back to The Darkest Dungeon. So, I want to take just a moment and pull back the curtain here and explain a little bit of my process. Uh, before every episode starts, I always kind of look around in the town, kind of remind myself of what's going on and what I want to do. I also take a look at the missions available in the embarkation screen and pick one and kind of think about maybe the party I'll take out. That way I don't spend too much time hemming and hawing over what I'm going to do uh, as these episodes are going to get long enough on their own. Now, imagine my surprise whatever I did that this time and looking around at the missions available, we've got bloody dice, critical dice, and more lucky dice available on our missions. Uh, the fourth one here is a bleeding pendant, bleeding pendant, pendant for a hellion. Oh man! Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a hellion yet, so that's not really that useful to us. And I sort of feel like the game said, "Oh, you're doing a role play series where you wanted to talk about a jester who was looking for some dice. Well, here you go. We heard you like." dice in your games, so we put some dice in your games so you could game while you game. I don't know, there's an image macro there somewhere. Well, since the game wants it, Parapont here is going to go ahead and receive some upgrades. I think we're going to go ahead and toss them into the guild, and I'm going to upgrade f Finale and Solo, or unlock Finale and Solo, rather, and uh, we are going to get him rolling for our next adventure as well. So, with that, let's see what skills we actually wanted him. I'm thinking I want to try something out uh, with him having just sort of a support role with our party um, and no slice off or harvest. Uh, this may go horribly, but I at least want to give it a shot. Uh, additionally, we could grab the Bleeding Pendant, the Critical Pendant. I'm thinking the Bleed Pendant is probably going to be best, even though I just set him up to, to not have any bleed skills at all. Uh, but also the uh, Deeds are still going to be coming in handy. And then for our party this time, I do really enjoy the Grave Robber. Uh, so I'd like to get her back out there. Poussin. And then if we add Fitten here we become the Shrouded Ones, which I think is kind of cool and uh, wouldn't mind bringing along. Our provisioning for a short mission should be pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll just do 12 food, a full stack, and we'll do two shovels just because we are heading into the wield and it tends to be shovel happy. A couple of anti-venoms as well. I'm trying to think. There's also a fair amount of bleeds with the rabid dogs, so that's uh, probably going to be helpful. It should do it for provisions for this time. And we'll go ahead and get started. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the Jester. I think the, uh, the, the character design for the Jester is absolutely amazing. And uh, for proof of that, just you know, check out my channel banner uh, right now. It's been updated with... A cool little pixel art version of myself in the Jester's clothes. I knew all these paths once. Now they are as twisted as my own ambitions. Alright, this is going to be a little bit of a struggle. We're going to do a fair amount of backtracking, which is kind of a pain. Uh, we need to get rooms explored, so there's no real chance of this one being quick. So if we go this way, let's see, it's going to be one, two, three. That'll be one backtrack two backtrack, three, four, or one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So really, uh, it's the same either way we go. Let's go ahead and take this long path first, uh, just in case like we only need uh, all but one, and we might complete that uh, just like one room early. All right, uh, oh, yep, you're famished. Okay, well. Distraught by the sight of the carcass and gets zoophobia, which I actually think is pretty terrible here. Stress resist against beasts goes down. Yeah, I'm not super excited by that. And speaking of beasts, oh, at least we got the surprise. That is certainly something. Now, 
We can battle ballad or so let's try this out. So this is gonna decrease their accuracy and then give him a big speed up so that he should be able to go next turn and get a uh, first shot. Also like the accuracy, wait a second. Oh, that's not the accuracy buff one. Uh, right, right, right. It's the single target one that buffs accuracy. That's just a multi-target hit. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's get a 58. Ugh. I feel like the 67 is more worthwhile. And we got a Blight. That'll take care of her in two turns, which is pretty nice. Uh, one point away from being able to get him out of here. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and do my finale. So let's see. Who is most important to kill? I'm going to go with the Cultist. As the Fiend falls... Faint hope blossoms. Now the idea here would be that the Jester has been moved to the back row. He's really debuffed right now. Uh, but we're not going to use him to attack for the rest of this fight. We're just going to be using him to buff the rest of our party. 62, 58. Uh, we could remove the bleed, but it's only a few points really. Let's go ahead and try that. Yeah, I didn't have great chances of success. I'm not too surprised. All right, 73. Disadvantage. Give them Very no nice. Quarter. I like the uh, the grave robber mostly um, due to the like high accuracy that the character has. I feel like she catches a lot of flack on uh, being underpowered from the community, but I tend to value. Consistent damage, even if it's crumbles. low. Like, I'd rather be able to hit for fours and fives than miss one turn and then hit for 15 the next, you know? Uh, maybe that's just me, but I tend to feel like that sort of consistency helps you better plan out your move order. Oh, no scouting. And so, uh, I'm generally a fan. Uh, now, do we want position do we want him starting in? I suppose it doesn't really matter. The back makes the most sense, so he should be fine there, really. Uh, the Jester does sort of gain the advantage of uh, making us a little bit resistant to surprise. I'm not quite sure how to phrase that, but uh, basically his move abilities mean that he can reorder the party a little bit on his own by moving himself around and uh, that can tend to come in handy. Another thing I really do like about the Grave Robber that again I feel like it's underappreciated is her uh, trap disarm which is quite high. Um, you know at 60 percent traps Compared to everybody else, like the next highest we have is the Jester with 40. Um, I feel like people don't assign a lot of value to the disarming of traps in this. You know, it's damage that you don't need to be taking. And uh, I, I'm a big fan of constructing parties given the opportunity that uh, come with somebody that can disarm. Either a... Grave Robber or a Bounty Hunter just about every time. Uh, only two of them got the debuff. That's actually kind of annoying. Um, I guess the debuff resist? It's all 20 across the board. You'd expect me to have gotten more of those guys, but oh well. We did get the double blight though. Can't complain too much about that. Uh, unfortunately... Oh, that was real dumb of me. Unfortunately, the... Um, Leper isn't going to be able to act. Okay, so I need him to be in the second rank to start off with. Uh, that makes more sense. Slight chance to kill. Oh, and he does get it. Fantastic. And the roar of the crowd. That's a really neat sound effect they've added in for that. All right, we'll go ahead. Flashing dagger is not really necessary, considering he's going to die and not leave a corpse because of it. So we'll do that instead. Man, and... Again, 
that hit chance combined with the crit chance, I'm I'm totally okay with. Uh, so he's taking three for three. He's at three as well, but he's going to get another turn. Let's go ahead and Plague Grenade again. That will prevent him from sliding forward, but it does add a second stack of bleed, so he's going to take six next turn. And that was going to happen from our Leper anyway. We do have to eat a Blanket Fire for our trouble, though, and that was ten damage. Man. Um... I guess all there really is to do is just do a uh, party buff. We're probably not going to use that at all due to uh, just not encountering any more combat soon enough. Uh, clear all corpses, and we'll shuffle him. And that gets him right in range of our leper, but Perhaps completely unnecessary point. due to that. Maybe I should have uh, considered how much food I was bringing along. Hmm. My health is not looking so great for the long term here. Oh, man. <sighs> the Shambler's Altar. It says, The sacrifice of fire is the gate to ruin. Place a torch if you crave the void. Yeah, I don't, I don't crave the void, guys. I'm sorry. I, uh, I know what that's going to lead to, and um, I'm not interested with a, uh, a level one party. So I'll leave that for a later date. The, uh, the Shambler is an encounter we will eventually see, but not today. Troubling Effigy. Hmm, not sure what would do that. We'll just go ahead and check it out. And any power now lost. Fair enough. A trap to disarm. Again, totally digging the 60% disarm. Go ahead and torch up and then clear that thicket. A victim to the spreading corruption. All right. Malformed with misintent. And an ectoplasm fight. Oh, I didn't reorder everybody. I am an idiot. Okay. Well, it's actually not going to matter um, due to Solo bringing him all the way to the front. I did get two debuffs. Nice. He can then... Uh, he can then miss horribly. Uh, we'll go ahead and flashing daggers. Again, I dig the accuracy of that, man. How quickly the tide turns. Oh, come on. It was like a weak crit to be stressing everybody out with. Oh, man. Again, though, the consistent hits are uh, nothing to just shrug off. Left him with one, huh? All right. Well, that eliminated one of them, and they both only got a single hit point left. Uh, no, not going to do it. I just know that I'm going to start getting it's like the cytokinesis ability used again. Yeah, there we go. The cytokinesis ability used against me to uh, to bring those guys in. All right, we'll go ahead and party buff. And that was kind of the perfect example of when I say I'd really rather him just do uh, the the leper there, just do consistent damage rather than. Miss one turn, do 19 the next. But, you know. A trifling victory. Sometimes victory you get what you want, sometimes you don't. Uh, we could use the shovel. But I don't think I can justify that. Actually, maybe we wouldn't need to, as it was an unlocked strong box. Okay. Now, we've got a whole lot of backtracking to do. Which... I'm just going to let the light go down, basically. We've got five torches left, so we'll be able to do a complete relight of our uh, torchlight before we end up moving on into new territory. It's probably not going to be necessary. Probably need to spend three of them at this juncture, maybe one more when we get to that room. That should work out okay. 
I think we'll be fine on Torchlight. Wish I'd brought more food, especially after that. Um, just so I could have used it for healing purposes. I do have Battlefield Medicine, but it's really more of a curing Bleed and Blight type skill than it is a restoring HP type skill. I kind of should have thought about that. So maybe it needs to be two stacks of food on a short mission if you're not bringing a healer along. Should become the standard. As the light gains purchase, spirits are lifted Ooh. and purpose is made clear. Good miss. Mortality Bad clarified crit. in a single oh, strike. and bleed. Five rounds. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Um we're going solo. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Solo completely missed everybody. Alright, well, at least we can bandage. That's something. And then Plague Grenade has a 62% chance. Noxious Blast has worse accuracy. How does that make any sense at all? That when I'm throwing at multiple people, I hit them better than when I'm actually targeting something. Okay. At least that can hit. And resist the blight. These guys have 60% blight resist. I don't know why I thought that would be a good idea to try. Um, our plague doctor is in a bad way right now. Hmm. Alright. Well, flashing daggers. Again, loving the consistent damage. Um... All we can really do... I'm gonna go ahead and do another solo. I got off two debuffs. That's not bad. Got a bandage again. Down to one HP. Again, 60% blight resist. Kind of expected. Oh, and the rabies. Uh, also really annoyed by the party shuffling. Really annoyed by the party shuffling. Don't bleed. Teetering Don't. on the brink. She bled. The abyss. Okay. Um, that's potentially really bad. If I can't get these guys down. Alright. We're going to go in finale. And then I really, really need the hit. There we go. Ooh, yeah. Like I said, yourself that consistent damage, man. And insidious killer. All right. She needs the food. Guess we go ahead and get her up to four so that she doesn't hit death's door with it. Uh. Hmm. But two more rooms we'd have to go through here. I I know you bleed. I'm I'm well aware of your status as a bleeder. Okay, a little bit nervous, just a little bit. No room battle there, which is really nice. Okay, now... Oh, that's not what I need to see. Alright, we're going to go in solo. Devastating Please blow. with the debuffs. One of them. Oh, man. They have 10% debuff resist. And more often than not, I feel like I've missed that. Just stay away from my plague doctor, and everything will be fine. Good hit. Such a terrible Ooh. assault cannot be left on. Okay, that's not a whole lot better. Although the good news here being that battlefield medicine can be applied. Get her back off death's door and get rid of. Yeah, no blood left for the leeches. Got it. And get rid of the status effect. Uh, so six and four. Go ahead and finale the guy in the back. Now. That could blight. Resist it. Yeah, okay, let's just get the kill. There we go. Okay. These nightmarish creatures can be A couple of party members. Can be beaten. Kind of uh, teetering on the brink here. 
I'm not nervous. You can't hear it in my voice. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Good scout. Good scout. Okay. Alright, and suddenly everything is a-okay, guys. So, uh, we revealed all of the final rooms, and there is nothing in them. So, all we're gonna do is wander around and collect some treasure. Alright. Oh my god, there was two of these things? Nope. I'm just gonna use my last torch. Not even tempted. Okay. That's actually crazy to me that there were two Shambler altars in uh, one dungeon. Yay, quest complete. Let's go ahead and continue. We're just going to head to uh, this last curio. Oh. Can I, can I just, I don't have enough food. I don't, oh my god. Gnawing hunger sets in. Turning wow. The against itself, weakening the oh. mind. That was awful. All right, that's what greed gets you. I'm, I'm getting out of here. Path and charted route reduces the isolation of our troubled estate. Not the greatest haul, really. Uh, six deeds, which is what we came down here for. Decent gold pickups, though. I guess I can't really be complaining too much there. Got the runs became a bad gambler, man. Those dice. Oh, that's actually hilarious to me. <laughs> Uh, in town, we'll only drink and fast healer. Okay, nobody leveled up, but we do have three characters that are getting real close. Uh, Pusin, Parapont, and Fiton all can do it on just one more adventure. Can all hit level two. And uh, when they do... I can see their angry faces as they stormed the manor. But I was dead before they found me. Okay. And the letter was on its way. I did get the letter, I'm aware. So, um, and we're going to give them the same kind of royal treatment when they uh, hit level 2 as we gave Reynald earlier. Now, um, we did unlock two new buildings in town. So let's go ahead and check those out. Uh, we've got the survivalist here. At home in wild places, she is a stalwart survivor and a strict instructor. All right. Uh, the survivalist basically serves the same purpose as the guild, uh, except for uh, your camping skills. And so uh, now we've got that unlocked. The crusader's description here, righteousness and conviction inspire compelling speeches around the campfire. In the face of mounting stress, the crusader is a leader, standing tall and refusing to break. His unshakable belief can assuage companions' fears, reassuring them that despite the hardships, they will most certainly endure. All will be well in the end. So, this allows him to unlock all of his camping skills. Uh, we do at least want to grab one more. Do a self-buff to reduce stress, increase accuracy, and if afflicted. So if he's broken already... Uh, it's like a huge de-stressor. All companion stress resists. 4v2. Zealous speech. Heal 10%. Pep talk. Wound care. Alright, so I think these are his class specific and then these are generic. Um, I'm thinking... Oh, we're never really going to use the stress resist all that much. Might as well grab Zealous Vigil, just in case uh, that ever happens. And then equip that. So we can have four. He only starts with three, so uh, we at least want to pick up the one more. Uh, and we also got the Nomad Wagon. Trinkets and charms gathered from all the forgotten corners of the earth. All right, which allows us to buy and sell trinkets now. Protective Collar for the Houndmaster, and a Fasting Seal. I wonder how that works. So, you no longer consume food, but when starving, you do no damage? What constitutes when you're starving? Okay. I don't really know how that would interact, and it kind of scares me, and we don't have 15,000 gold anyway, so it's not going to matter. Uh, speaking, though, of trinkets, go ahead and grab him his bloody dice as well. Um, the... I, 
kind of like the bouncing back and forth thing. Um, what I'm thinking here is that and then like harvest. Accuracy 80, 80, 50. I think that's what I'm going to do for his setup. I never find myself really using Inspiring Tune. Um, we might as well, since we've got the increased bleed skill chance, pick up a bleeding skill that we can use from time to time. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll go with that for him. All right, that's going to be it for this episode. No, it's not, actually. Let me check out the stagecoach. Nobody knew. All right. Well, while we're here, let's go ahead and increase our roster size by one. Get that up to 15. Hopefully, uh, we start to encounter some classes we do not yet have, as there are quite a few. I'd love an occultist uh, as a dedicated healing class. I prefer him over the Vestal, so that would be nice. Uh, also, I guess we could go ahead and get Fiton into the tavern because she will only drink for us. All right, uh, and then Clarinel is not allowed to go to the brothel. So let's get her over for a little bit of prayer. And then Pusin will only gamble, which he can't. 34, and he's a bad gambler. So we'll uh, keep him away from the gambling hall. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to subscribe to see more videos daily. Leave a like or a comment if you have anything to say about this or any of my other episodes. And I will catch you guys next time.